Good afternoon, everybody. It is Heidi Kaisen at Hen and Chick Studio in Conrad, Iowa, and I'm here with Jamie, and we are going to be talking about Stripology Ruler. On Monday night, we did our monthly product showcase, and if you missed that, uh, you can still go back and watch it. Uh, it's on YouTube. You can watch it on Facebook. You can go to our website under um, Inspiration and click on Hen House Happy Hour. You'll find that. Uh, Jamie did a demo using the Stripology Ruler on a new project that we're doing called Amelie uh, with a Sugar Cube, and I'll show it to you in just a second. And the response always to the Stripology Ruler is awesome. And we know that we have loyal Stripology fans, but we also know that some of you are still learning about the Stripology and wondering why or what it is that's so special about that ruler. Uh, I have often said, and my, my customers hear me say this, this is not something that I, uh, you know, it's a little soapbox that I have, is that when I buy a ruler and they cost a lot of money, I want that ruler to really work hard for me. If it's a $5 ruler, then that's one thing. But if it's a $65 ruler, um, and it's going to cost a little bit more. I want to know that the ruler is going to work for me on a lot of projects, not just one thing. Well, let me tell you, my testimonial today for you is that the Stripology rulers are those rulers, okay? And they come in three sizes, the mini, the square, and the XL. They all have purposes. They all have reasons for wanting them. Um, but we're going to get started, and Jamie's going to talk a little bit about um, the stripology. So I'm going to turn the camera. Hello, everyone. So stripology, as Heidi mentioned, you know, um, some of you might be very familiar with it. Uh, some of you may not be familiar very much, and some may have zero experience with it. So we wanted to just come back and kind of touch on some different things. I know when we ran through, we weren't really doing necessarily a tutorial on Monday on our last product showcase, but we were doing um, more of a demo with it. And of course I have this sugar cube here and I just have to tell you, stay tuned because the quilt top is coming together rather nicely and it is absolutely adorable. But those um, strips that you saw me cut with the triangles and such, when you are using the stripology ruler, what I have found is that they become more precise, therefore everything lines up a lot easier. So if you ever struggle, there's multiple reasons um, with seams that you might struggle, but one of them certainly is the quarter inch seam is very important and you can go back and watch that class on our website too. But um, if you're not cutting everything the same, the stripology takes out some of that um, possibility. I mean, every you know we're not perfect even if we think we are. Or not when nobody's ever perfectly square and you know what it's okay to have some rounded edges on you sometimes but let's talk a little bit more about this stripology ruler and so I have the XL laying here I'm gonna flip it around so you can see the numbers a little bit better okay so if you come along here at the bottom and what uh, Gundren has done so well is take the guesswork out of everything so if I need one and a half inch strips you'll notice right here there's a star that says one and a half inch cut. So if it's a day that my mind isn't thinking very well and I, I can go one, three, and then I'm confused after that, all I have to do is follow the stars. So one to the next star, to the next star, to the next star. You follow what I'm doing, right? And please um, give us thumbs up or if you have questions, what if I'm going too fast um, or you, something's not making sense, that's the only way uh, this is this is the only way that you learn is by asking the questions, and I don't know what you want to know unless you ask, right? And, and Jamie, I think that's something that here at Hen and Chick Studio, there are no stupid oh, questions, absolutely. no silly questions, no. I mean, we want all of the questions um, to be answered. So absolutely, this is the place. This is a safe place to ask those questions. Yeah, and if you don't want to ask, give us a call. If you don't feel yes. safe that way, give us a call. So let's go back down here again, Heidi, if we can. So we talked about, so the same thing is true for your two and a half cuts. Taking the guess word out, work out that we can go square to square to square. So as you notice, as you follow along, we always start at the zero and get a nice, crisp, straight square edge. 
and that often helps us when we're turning our ruler to line up again. So we're starting at the zero. If I need two and a half, all I do is go square to square to square. So it takes the guesswork out of adding and remembering where you're at. It also takes the guesswork out of, now we do love the Creative Grids, totally different product, but if I'm cutting two and a half, I'd have to pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, and I can still use the ruler very well. You don't. And that one is a quilter select ruler. Oh, we also I, use yes. Creative Grids. We I have, I know, we have Sorry. multiple rulers. My um, apologies. But yes, yes, and that, the just so you know, the quilter select ruler is the ruler that has a slightly different color mm -hmm. because the bottom of it has a no slip. Which um, that's. Uh, which is a whole nother a whole great nother thing. A whole great thing, but we won't talk about that. That's but right. Wanted to just kind of tell a little bit of the difference, and I'll demonstrate that a little bit too as we're cutting. So also on this XL ruler, and we talked about it on Monday, there's different squares within the ruler. And I know sometimes this can be hard to see depending on reflection and stuff, but if you see the black lines here, can you see that that's a square mm -hmm. right there? So there's a three inch square, a four inch square, a five, a six, a seven, eight, and a nine, and a 10, 11, and a 12 inch square, okay? So that kind of eliminates the use you could, like when people are trying to trim, they buy a 12 inch ruler right. to trim up a block. Right. That can all be done on this ruler. Yeah. And a little bit less handling of fabric if you know how to use this, utilize this ruler to the best you can too. Now I'm gonna flip it around a little bit here because we know a lot of things use the half inch. So same thing here. And this is what we actually used on Monday night and we still have um, the stickers that you can use to help mark if you're doing a lot of cutting. So again, I marked my eight and a half inch square on both sides here because I knew that's where I was always wanting to cut is through those lines. But the same thing here, you have the four, but now it's half inch, so four and a half, five and a half, six and a half, seven and a half, or eight and a half. So it keeps going. Anyway, you can read, I don't, not, you can figure that out and what it means. But a great tool, and there's multiple uses to this, that um, even on our website, Gundren was so gracious and uh, hosted a class for us back, I can't remember what month it was, but that is available on the website where she really goes into more, I would say, in depth of how to use some of the diagonals to cut different kinds of pieces and stuff. That's not where we're starting today. We're starting simple 101 stripology, okay? Um, so let's talk about first, and I'm going to flip this off for a second, your fabric. Now, we all know fabric shifts and stuff. So the nice thing with the Stripology ruler, if I'm utilizing it to the best of my abilities that I can, and you'll get more confident as you do it, okay? Let me tell you, at first, I was hesitant. I, wasn't, I was not sure because it was an investment, and Heidi already talked about that. But the more I got comfortable, the more I use it. And it's probably the primary ruler I use now. Okay, so what I've done here, so here's our fabric as it would come off the bolt. Okay, I'm gonna turn the salvage edge towards me, and bring my fold to just above the salvage edge. Now, why do I do that? Because I like to see where the salvage is. Because if I did it this way, I'm not sure where that other edge is. Okay. Um, and I'll show you as we get going uh, uh, why I do it that way. Now, somebody else might have another suggestion, and, and that's always good. We're always learning here as well, and that's the beauty of what we do and of, of everything. We always are all learning. So now I've put my mat, or my, um, my XL ruler, back on top of my fabric. And, Jamie, I'm going to come around and okay. look over your shoulder, okay? So everybody just hang tight as we go yep. this way. And I'm, right. yep, you, I'm going to just look over that's your shoulder. Right. Okay. So here we are. Now I'm using my folded edge as my straight edge. So it is lined up here at the top. Little hint to you, make sure you're not like this because then you don't get this cut at the bottom. Because you're in the middle of the loop Because I'm there. in the middle of the loop so my blade wouldn't get in there, okay? I don't have a preference. I mean, you might say, they might say use 12, whatever. Right now we're using the 12 line. I could come up here Right now it doesn't make a difference because all I'm working on is cutting straight line. 
So right now we're going to pretend that we're cutting our um, binding. Okay. Easy, right? Or common, common cuts are two and a half inch strips. You're creating your own. Um, so I'm going to go in here. So you have your jelly roll. You have your um, fold lined up with the white yep. line in this particular case, one, whatever yep. number it is, because it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. matter. At this point, it does not matter. Okay. And so Heidi, while you're in here, if you look over here, what I want to do is get this edge or my zero on the, what am I say, on the fabric. So it's cutting through all the layers of the fabric. For instance, if I started here, you would if you come miss. down here. I'm getting the edge right here, but not that little guy sneaking in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want to make sure I put this all the way over, and I'm going to go back to the black because it might be easier to see. Okay. So now I'm. You can see I've got all my edges caught, mm -hmm. catching them. Okay. Okay. So now when you're using, you can use 45 or uh, 60. I I don't have a preference either way. We happen to be using the 60 right here. Um, we're going to come in, and an easy way to get in these lines is to start at a slight angle, about a, I don't know, is that about maybe 45, 60 degree angle, to get into the slot. Make sense? Okay, mm -hmm. so now I'm in the slot. Again, I want to stay uh, at the upright as much as I can because if I'm tilting, I'm actually cutting the plastic. And why should we do that? We're going to keep it straight. So then I'm just going to slide through. And now I have my zero. I'm not picking up because then I'd be shifting my fabric and everything. The beauty of this is the speed you can work. So now if I want to cut, if I'm making my own two and a half inch strips for binding or for jelly roll or, you know, all yep. those things. And I'm going to go back go to that back square. Back to the square and come to the next okay. one. And I'll get out of the way here Same so you thing. can I'm gonna come put in, it in there. Just a slight angle. Cut. One smooth motion. Okay. Going to the next square. Cut. Square. Cut. Okay, everybody following along? We know Stephanie, who does a lot of binding, um, now swears by cutting her binding on this. She didn't believe me when I first told her. Okay, so now I've reached the end of where my fabric is, right? Because I this I was at 15. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm going to pick up my ruler, and now I have two straight edges, right, on either side. Okay, let me think. So now we could trash whatever we're not going to use that's extra. I'm going to just leave a few strips there to show you another thing to do with it, okay? Now, let's say, for instance, I'm using... So quick way to quick way to cut your binding. You could come back in now if you were wanting to get rid of that salvage edge. Let me turn it this way just so the numbers make sense. Now I'm not using any numbers, but I'm using this line at the bottom. Against your straight against edge. Against my straight edge. But now I want to catch, or if I'm going to cut blocks from it, I want to catch the fold. So if I was using like mini brick road, and I believe it calls for three and a half inch squares. Yeah. Now, a um, couple tips here that I'm just thinking of that I'm going to okay, add yeah. in. For example, uh, a rotating mat would be helpful mm -hmm. at this moment. Yep. Um, you can actually get a mat that rotates. Yes. Or this, this mat is loose, so you can technically rotate the whole mat so that you don't have to move the fabric or the ruler, or you could have moved your body yeah. if your table was small yep. enough yep. and could have gotten mm -hmm. around it as well. Yep. Um, and I always say, a rule I always say is the less you move your fabric, Absolutely. the more accurate yep. you are going to be. And that's no matter what ruler oh, or exactly. what method that you're doing. And so, again, what Heidi said, I'm comfortable enough that I could, so our ruler had started this way. I'm comfortable enough with using it now that I know I'm just going to pick it up. If you weren't comfortable enough to doing it, there's where your rotating mat would come into mm -hmm. place. So nothing is moving yet, but my lines are still going the same direction that I cut. So then I pick up the ruler, come back in here, and I'm going to cut two and a half by three and a half inch squares for my mini brick road. 
So I've already cut the two and a half inch strips, mm -hmm. right? So if we did that, we would have the two and a half inch strip that's been already been cut. If I was doing it for something else, again, I'd be picking it up, moving it, stuff. This keeps it a little bit yeah. less. Of course, you can do things with your other rulers the same way. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the beauty of it is that you have multiple choices as to what your comfort level is. But now I'm going to come back in because I want to cut squares. I'm using that straight edge I just cut because I haven't moved any of my fabric. It's all you know still it's there. Straight. Lining it up at the top. Now I'm catching, oh, can you see it, Heidi? The fold. Yep. Because I want to eliminate that fold. And most patterns allow extra usage out of the strip you're cutting. If they're having you cut this the width of fabric down, mm -hmm. there's extra. So again, instead of unfolding it and repositioning it to cut my blocks, I'm just gonna go from here. So I've caught that edge, same thing. Now I'm gonna start at zero. Okay, and now let's say I want need the three and a half inch. So I'm gonna come over one, two, three into the half inch and slice it. Okay, now if I'm making sense, okay, so same thing is true from here. If I wanted to do, let's show that first. I'm going to move that. So all your salvages just so came off. So there's all my salvages. They're off. All I've done is cut a little piece off the fold. So now I have two, oop, four, six, eight, just that quick. Yep. Okay. And actually... You have four. Oh, four. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah you Sorry. have four in each. Four, yes, you're yeah, right. Yeah, so you have 16. Yeah, that quick. And that's probably what you need for that pattern. So right. now I'm going to come back in here. And and Jamie is using the mini brick road from Terry Atkinson um, Designs as her cutting method today. And again, this is where this ruler is. It's not just for GE Designs. Right patterns it can be translated into any other patterns um, many many other patterns as well yep so she's using that's the pattern she's cutting pieces for this cute pink yep and so again if now let's say and i can't remember i should look it up real quick um the next size because there's larger rectangles let's look it up and see before we cut okay because i can still use what do we say we have 20 there so now i need a two and a half by four and a half so the same thing I did. Now, if you're really good with math, you could have not removed those other ones and just added the four and a half to your number, okay? Mm -hmm. So that you never picked up the ruler. But I wanted you to see the cuts, how quick it was. So now I need four and a half. So here's zero. I've lined up my straight edge there that I just cut. I've lined up my straight edge there. So now I need to go to four and a half. And now, and just slick. There's my four and a half, all ready to go. Slick as a whistle, slick Jamie. As a whistle. Yeah, slick so, as a whistle. Just a, and and the fun thing, and now you have some of these left too that you could still use for other things. But of course, you'd have to open them up unless you needed a smaller thing. But again, it's just showing you the basics of some of these things to do. So we've only talked about two and a half inch strips and how you can cut them down. Now you can do the same if you need to, if you were making such as when we did um, the Amelie, you start with 10 inch blocks, 10 inch squares. Same basic principle happens. This fabric clearly does not match that fabric, but same basic principle happens. I'm gonna lay my fabric so, so in other words, as you're doing this, you're laying your fabric, but if, so like we do not sell right. pre-cuts other than fat quarters. Right. So if you think, oh, I want to work with a 10 inch square pattern and it really needs a 10 inch square. It's not just, t you know, a square we're cutting down. You can make your own in minutes. And you know what I like about that, Heidi, is that I get to pick all the 10 inch instead of just having... I have yes. a little bit of freedom of choice instead of buying the. Yes. But now we know every, everybody has a different thought. So same thing. I'm going to come in here. You're lining your. I'm lining up at my fold and I'm making sure. Yeah, I'm going to slide over just a little bit because you see when I get down here, I, I realize that's a salvage edge, but I'm not sure what's hiding underneath there. 
So let's just slide it over just a little tinch there, make sure we get catch all the fabric. So same thing, I would come back in here, start at my zero, lay my first straight line. I need a 10 inch block, I'm gonna come over to 10. And guys, you can translate this to any inch block that you would need, whether That's it was right. a half inch or a full inch. And there's my 10. Lift up my block, open my trunk, pull the things I don't need out. <laughs> Whoops, and then I get that. Turn it this way, or rotate the mat, whatever's the easiest. Mat, whatever's easiest. Remember, we're on live here, trying to make sure everybody can see everything. Okay? Same thing here. Now I'm going to line up with the top. That straight edge I just cut. I'm gonna make sure I have my fold. Come into the zero. Since I'm doing a 10 inch, I'm coming over to the 10. And you can always get, you should always be able to get four 10 inch squares yep. out of a salvage to salvage with the fabric. And Look now, at that. there's my squares. So like that pattern the other day, mm -hmm. Amelie, and, and yep. you, that we showed during our product showcase. Did you not have to cut those 10 inch squares in half? Then I, I just left them just like that. Okay. And then I just used this, the edge of the um, ruler. You just, okay, because and that's a, another, I mean, you can literally use the edge of the ruler, yeah. not, you don't yeah. have to necessarily always use a line on the ruler. Right, yep, I use the edge of the ruler and you go point to point. If you really wanted to get picky, there is a diagonal right here that you can square it up that way too. So you can see the diagonal. Oh, and it goes right all there. the way over. Yep. So, and then I could come back in here. Yep. And use it and cut it in half right there. Yes. And okay. uh, Shelly is noting, and we agree, Gundren supports oh, her, her rulers and provides so many tutorials. Her website is full of ideas. We love that. And um, that is just another great way um, to learn more. But um, we just, and, and we're glad you're enjoying the tip, Shelly. So that's <laughs> wonderful. I hope so. So far, I'm not singing any songs, but I'm sure you want one today, right? Okay, so we've talked about some other things. Now, the other great thing here is if you have half square triangles or anything like that, you have the opportunity to square them up and trim down any excess. That will be something that maybe we talk about a different day because there's so many things that we can talk about. First step is get comfortable with the tool that you have at your fingertips before you try going further. I do want to show you just a couple more things though. First on this ruler, now somebody might ask, what if I need a quarter inch cut? Same thing as is supported as you, you see here. Each one of these is a quarter inch line. So if I need at a two and a three, two and three quarter inch, I would go line my fabric up. Shall I show? Would it be easier? Sure. I'm very much a visual. Is anybody else very much a visual learner? Reading directions is great, but sometimes it's easier when you see. And the camera girl here is trying to get as much visual <laughs> in as possible because it is it is helpful to see it and yeah. to and to watch what somebody else is doing. So again, so let's say I need. I'm going to say I need two and three quarter just because we're stuck on the two yeah. number. So you're so, once again you are I'm lining it up, up at the top. But now I still got to create my straight edge before I do anything. Yep. So what? I, did you did you see my mistake? Anybody there? Anybody catch it? Do you see how I lined it up? If not, you can reverse it later and go back and find it. Okay, so now I'm going to come into the zero and I'm going to create my straight edge first. Lift the hatch, pull out my, there's my straight edge. Now, if I need a quarter inch, two and a quarter or three and a quarter, I'm sliding that straight edge to the quarter inch mark. So in other words, you're making that your zero. Yep, now I'm making that my so zero. So now if you cut on the two and a half, you're really two and three fourths. Yep. And if that's too much math and you need three fourths, just slide it to the three fourths. So that's half. This is three fourths. And cut it at two. And cut it at two. And this is where the stickers have to come in yep. really good because that way you don't get mixed up yep. on, on that. So the tip, the biggest tip I would say is always make sure you, not your checkbook balance, don't zero that out, but always zero your fabric, okay, mm -hmm. before you start cutting. Zero that edge mm -hmm. before you do anything with it. 
I do want to show you um, the mini real quick because this will kind of demonstrate. So for instance, on this one, when we cut out the squares, actually when I cut out all of it, I used the stripology ruler. But when I wanted to come back in after I had sewn these squares together, I wanted to make sure I had a nice squared piece of fabric and I used the mini one. And this is gonna be harder because I didn't bring one that's open. But the same thing would happen is there's a white thing on here to center it. Mm -hmm. And now it's already sewn so you can't. And then you use the lines to trim it. So if I'm understanding you correctly, I'm just gonna kinda, so here's the zero. This is yep. like the bullseye. Yep. So now if I said this is supposed to be three and a half inches because right. with seams it would have been. Yep. Then, then you would have been trimming on those lines. Three and a half and three and a half. And then you would rotate it and yep, then you would do it the other way. and do it the other way. So then you end cool. up with a very nice squared piece of fabric without any hanging chads or edges on them that helps everything line up the best that we can with our imperfections. As and well. we can do that squaring on the XL, yes. so we but, can do it on here, but, when I but want... you got this big ruler. Right. And when I'm using and my tiny, if I have tiny blocks, then it's easier for me to use a tiny ruler. Correct. Because so both just... sizes so, really have their um, purposes. So we have this discussion um, in the store because people mm -hmm. ask us all the time. If I can only buy one ruler, what would what you, would you recommend? Um, I bought this one first because I wanted to learn. Uh, and... In the smaller projects that you would do, table runners or anybody that's doing like the minis, um, anything like that, this one is handy. But I will tell you, uh, this is the ruler I use the most now at home. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. This would be the one I would recommend to start with. Now, somebody, if somebody else has a different philosophy, feel free yep. to share it because we all have different. But certainly... The functions of this one, every single time I'm sewing, I probably use it. Right. And the square mm -hmm. is technically worked into that there are some of the elements right. of the square that yep. is in there but again at some point it's sort of like yeah if you're trying to trim a three and a half inch block that xl ruler might be too large yep. and the amelie pattern actually shows uh, the picture she has in there actually shows using the squared not the xl but the squared is built into here so i feel like if you can manage the little bit bigger ruler you still get the same function from one mm -hmm. um some people like to have all three all three sizes again it's it's your choice of what you like to do but it certainly is a it's another something you can put in your toolbox to pull right. out and to help you become successful because we do hear a lot of comments and we are going to actually talk about another aspect um and another video about making getting your points to match and when you cut correctly that's where you're starting mm -hmm. so if you cut correctly then that's going to make everything easier. Uh, if we have time, Heidi, can we go back and show this just real quick? Because I wanted to show them what yes. I was talking about on why if I was cutting. And I, I tell you, this is this once you get used to these rulers too. They all have their purposes here. But if I was cutting my uh, binding from this, every time I would cut, I have to pick up my ruler. That's correct. It doesn't matter which side I go from. I'm going to have to pick up my ruler every time. Well, so and that's why that's what the difference. And is. even how we teach you, we teach you square your edge up on the right, then you rotate that fabric, yep. and that's that's eliminated in the XL yep. uh, ruler, the stripology ruler as well. So, and I know we didn't show that, but I just wanted to give you yep. show what we were meaning. Yes. without cutting of that too so yes. of course there's probably a million different things that when we stop this video that we'll think oh my gosh we should have talked about that again i would say heidi if anybody has any questions um to ask us first of all because we don't know unless you ask that's right but secondly um don't be afraid that's right you got it got to try something um new and kathy yeah. is enjoying the demonstrations and thank you we love working together kathy and we agree, stripology rulers are the best. They, they, they are very a nice tool to have in your yeah. house. Yes. Yeah, so. Well, I think that's probably, are we wrapping it up I for today? I think that's good for today. Um, you know, uh, we'll awesome. leave you, right? That's Get right. back to, there's stuff to do for these frenzies going on around here. That's absolutely right. So everybody, have a great weekend.